Hello, welcome to my channel. So last week I was playing with some techniques to make some grungy papers and I was inspired by Lori uh, Paint Girly. She was playing with sprays on the jelly plate and I'm also inspired by um, Texture Junkies. Uh, she, I can't say specifically which video, but she plays with a lot of like mixing alcohol inks and acrylics and things like that on the jelly plate as well. And these here were done mostly with um, the alcohol inks and sprays and um, paints that I showed there. Although this orange, I ran out of the orange I used here, so I'm gonna try using this um, fresco finish. Hopefully it doesn't dry too quickly. These I did on the five by seven. Um, I think this one's my favorite one. And I'm gonna try to do them on a big plate. Um, and we'll see what happens. I also, once I did the background, I kind of added these uh, masks designed by Susan Dufresne for PM Artist Studios. So we might try that. So I've got my huge uh, plate here, 12 by 14. I always forget how big it is. The technique I'm gonna show here is you, you pull it while all the layers are wet. Uh, the other thing is here, I just sprinkled on alcohol ink. I'm gonna see if I can sprinkle it through a stencil um to get more of a fine pattern yes yeah, so that's my plan so the order i'm going to try is i'm going to try some alcohol inks with some stencils this is a pm artist studio stencil this might be interesting and then maybe something small there and i don't think these patterns are going to show precisely after because i'm going to reactivate them i'm going to add the alcohol first and then the paint and then it'll probably smoosh it this is just an experiment, so I i don't know what's going to happen. So I'm just going to add some of the browns. Now this is my first time using alcohol ink on my big jelly plate, so I want to say goodbye to the nice clear surface. It's going to be yellow after this. So it, um, it has been very good to me. It's a nice clean plate. So I'm just going to sprinkle on a bunch of different colors. Um, I'm gonna leave the blue, I think mostly to the Distress Spray. So we've got, uh, these colors are, the first one was Teakwood, the second one was Sunset Orange, and this one is Terracotta. And I'm just kind of randomly putting that in there. I think I want more of the brown. Get more of the orange here. And more of the orange here. So fingers crossed, it works. Um, if it doesn't, that's that's fine. I'll have fun playing. You may or may not see this journey. Well, obviously you're seeing it if you're seeing it, but <laughs> just talking to myself. Okay. Now I'm going to um, take those stencils off. I don't really care that it's you know dried or not dry, but what I am going to do is I'm going to turn that over onto some tissue. Let's take this off and this pattern is not going to specifically stay so I'm going to spray this with some alcohol Actually, let's do this let's spray it and then we'll put the paper on top so I'm putting it alcohol side up and I'm just going to spritz with some rubbing alcohol. And I'm gonna sop that up with the, and I'm just gonna use um, the baby wipe, not for the wetness, but just to protect my hands from all the, all the ink. And I'm just gonna spray through the, through that to wet it. Try to pick up as much of that alcohol ink as possible just to clean off the stencil and use up the product 
I don't really have a plan for this paper, but you never know. We'll see what happens. And I'll lift that off and set that aside to dry. This still has a lot of alcohol ink on it, so let's do that one more time. This isn't any wet strength tissue paper, but I find that the alcohol um, spray doesn't really degrade the um, tissue very much, so that's handy. Okay, so let's put that aside too, and um, I won't be greedy smurf. I know I won't get all of that up, so let's just put those aside for a moment. Next, I'm going to, let's just put on the paint. I have a piece of um, Hanson Mixed Media paper uh, ready to go because I'm going to want to try to pick this up while it's wet. Now that might dry quickly. Do I have another orange that doesn't dry as quickly that we can add to the mix? I have this metallic orange. Let's do that. Okay, so we're going to add that. And we're going to add this one as well. It's kind of randomly. And then I'm going to try that big brayer again, and then we're going to spritz it right away with the um, alcohol, and I hope it will um, reactivate the alcohol ink. So just kind of just loosely, I want to put that on pretty thick because I want it to not dry too much. Okay, and then we're going to spritz it with some distressed... That was Distress Oxide, and then just some alcohol. And I feel like it's not really penetrating to the alcohol layers below, so let's just add just a few more little drizzles. We'll see what happens. And then I'm gonna spritz it one more time get nice and soppy and that's just with alcohol it's not with water let's put this down and see what happens so i'm hoping for a grungy grungy background um but when i did my practice pieces i didn't use the alcohol ink on the stencil first so i'm not certain how this is gonna Work. We might have to add more layers. It's all good though, we're just playing. I'm not really um, looking for a specific result other than making some grunge. So the, I can see the first layer uh, stayed there, but some of it came up. Kind of cool. I wonder if I spray it with alcohol now while it's still registered, if it'll pick up more of that alcohol ink. So let's do that. Just put it back down. Make sure you work in a well ventilated area if you're using alcohol inks or sprays. And let's do that here. Nice and wet. My paper's getting wrinkly, but that's okay. That's kind of cool. Not as much of the um, distress spray came up, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna just add some more. Let's add it through some circles just to see. I'm gonna lay that back down. It's kind of like a wet on wet technique. And you could probably do this um, without the use of the jelly plate, but um, I don't know. I just thought this would be fun. our layer. 
And because the Distress Oxide is water reactive, we could even just spritz it with some water while it's still sitting there. And let it run. Ooh, that looks cool. And it's running down. That's kind of neat. I don't know if you can see that, but I like it. This is really orange here. I'd like to get a bit more blue there. So that's water. Let's try, ooh, let's see that. The alcohol, it just really splits it up. Okay, so let's, um, let's set this aside. I'm liking this darker caramel color. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just going to be crazy and I'm just gonna throw some of that in the middle while it's drying, just to give it some sort of rusty spots. Color ooze around. Hope you can see this well enough. I know I'm going, I'm bringing my page kind of vertical a little bit, and it's almost like the alcohol ink is um, resisting the distress spray. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's do another one. I'll show you that once it's dry. I'm just going to put it on a horizontal surface to dry. Let's lift this up. And this is looking a little bit um, muddy, but that's okay. Oh, I've got this um, patina. And it's okay that's still wet because, again, we're going for the grungy. Look at more of this sort of darker color. I think a bit of this uh, crimson. Let's do that. Let's put that through a stencil. Put that over here, and this over here. And we're just going to kind of. Make some, ah! <laughs> just throw that everywhere. This is very um, high energy jelly printing. We're just throwing stuff around. Okay, and some orange. And then I do like the brighter orange. And I think I'll leave the blue paint off for now. I changed my mind as I'm seeing this. I don't want it to get too muddy. I'm just gonna do that. While we have that down, let's add a bit of the Distress Spray with the stencil still down. Let's see what that does. And some of this dark brown and then some of this uh, terracotta. I really liked how that terracotta looked. Okay. Lift that up. I'm just oops, sorry, I'm just gonna press it down over here. Lift this up. And this time because there's paint on there, I'm just gonna try to roll it off. Oops, on the side. Let's see what happens if we bit of that too. A bit of um shadow shadow technique. Ooh that looks good. Ooh I wish I could keep that. And should we do some circles? Neat. Okay, so I think I'll let that dry and then we'll pick it up with some titanium buff, which I had out. I don't know where it went. And then I think I'll add a little bit more of the um, the dark brown and the distress spray. That's my plan. This is still drying. You can see some of how that distress oxide is turning sort of that cool green color. 
So I'm just gonna let that um, continue to dry naturally. Not fully dry, but I don't care if it kind of smushes a little bit. So I'm gonna use this unbleached Pro titanium. And um, then we're gonna add some more spritzing and alcohol inks, and then we're gonna smush, smush, smushy smush. So the possibilities are endless. You just um, play, have fun. All right. So my goal is to keep this wet. And I should have paid attention to where I already had a lot of blue, but I forgot to. So I'm just going to wing it. And I'm just going to add just some sprays. I suppose I could have put it through... Um, some of that brown and some of that orange that we like maybe over here let's not forget the edges and then I'm going to spritz it with alcohol before adding my pickup paper Push that around. Fingers crossed for the grunge. Let's see if it's picking up. So that is a lot more muted as of the background, which I think I'm gonna just take that off and then we'll make another background using what's left over. So that's kind of, that's more muted, but you can still see a lot of different textures through there. Let's pick this up with some blue this time. Let's try some other spray. Could do the Seth After spray. It's like a this one is a coffee, I think, and it's like a dark brown. And then we could pick up with the light colored spray with our um, stencils. Let's do that. So I'm gonna spray and then flip. Spray. I'll do a flip. There. Let's do more of this on top and some of this orangey, just some orange blobs. Let's do lots of them. I want this one a bit darker. Maybe some green spray? I do have this green um, Seth Aptor. Let's just add just a hint of that over here. It might be too green. So I don't know if I want to add it everywhere. I'm just going to add it in two spots, maybe three spots, maybe four. I'll let that dry just a smidge. And we can always add on top of these prints after we've pulled them, if you know we want to enhance things, uh, depending what I'm using them for. These make great, um, sorry, these make great tags, um, ATCs, postcard bases. Let's see how other prints are drying. Here's this one. And that orange metallic is quite bright. It's still a bit wet right there. And here's this one. This one's more of a uh, muted. But it's kind of cool how that um, magenta, was it magenta I used? Where did it go? This one, oh, not magenta, alizarin crimson. How it made a little bit of purple, but not too much purple. I think those are gonna look cool with the um, faces on. And here it's kind of got getting really cool texture. I don't know if that texture will stay, but I'll just show you here. Oop. It's kind of neat. Not sure about this green, but with this blue, it might um, tone it down a bit. 
I feel like I should use more than one color of blue. So we'll do the patina and the turquoise. I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit more. And we'll try to do a traditional pickup where we, I'm not gonna re-wet it, I'm just gonna pick it up and hope for a clean plate after. Dry. I'm just gonna show how the stencil, how cool that looks. And I'm, you know, probably gonna have to clean that, but I thought you could even do like a still shot of your stencils before you clean them off. You can make them like a digital collage. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take a few pictures of those before I clean them off. And I don't always clean off my stencils, but because this one has different um, like distress sprays, which are water reactive, I'm gonna, I will clean that off. Okay, so she's not fully dried, but I'm getting impatient. I don't wanna wait anymore, so. I'm gonna just use, like I said, these two colors of blue. I'm just gonna kind of do them random. With this big plate, it's uh, important to get enough paint on. So I'm gonna be quite generous and then I can always spray her off. So that's a lot of paint. And let's just mix those up. So we're going for that patina kind of look. You can see it's maybe reactivating some of the distress, but that's okay. Here, I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Roll that off, get my paper down, and let that really try to soak up everything on the plate. Let's we'll see what we can do with our backgrounds. So even if you don't make videos, it might not be a bad idea to record yourself. Because, for example, like I didn't record when I was working on this. And I would love to know how I got some of these areas, but I don't remember. <laughs> so um, even if you're not posting videos, you can record videos for your own sake, for your own learning. Um, find out, oh, that, I really liked how that worked. How did I do that again? Because sometimes, especially with jelly printing, we're doing so many things. We forget what we've done, what we like doing. Even like I'll look back at some of my previous videos and go, oh, I forgot. Like I did like to do that. I used to do that all the time. And um, I should do that again. And you recombine ideas that you've had. It's a journey. And sometimes we cycle back. All right, let's see, I don't think that's gonna be ready. So let me put that aside. Right, so there's that background. I can't remember which way it was. I feel like it was this way. So that's kind of cool. I like how some of the white's showing through this one by of this print and I'll post uh, some close-up shots at the end. Uh, next I'm going to be showing you some of the um, things I created with the other backgrounds. I haven't cut this one down yet. I'm not sure. I might save it for a bigger piece but um, I'll show you. Uh, Before I cut this up I'm going to take a picture of it because that might make a good digital background. So I'm going to pause this, take a picture, and be right back. Okay, so I took my picture and now how do I want to break this down? I'm thinking I want to do a few examples of how I did these um, fellas. These. Um, this one I, I added some alcohol inks and then I restamped it. This one is just um, using the impression from that directly on there. So what you could do is you can look where is an area where I like how the background goes with this with the face like that that might be kind of cool do I want to do it down here I don't like that as much I don't like his forehead there now so and then you can add shading around the outside Actually, that looks kind of cool. I like how his lips are a little bit lighter.
that's kind of neat there. So I'm going to show you how to get him on there. So I believe the first time I saw this technique was at PM Artist Studios where Patricia used her jelly plate like a stamp and she has all her jelly plates mounted on clear plexiglass. I only have my 8x10 and now my little round one um, mounted so I'm still looking for one for this 5x7. So I just picked it up and um, used it like kind of loosey-goosey as a stamp so you can see through where you want to place the image. So I just put the paint down on the jelly plate you put your mask or your stencil, you use a paper to um, remove the excess paint, pick up your stencil uh, or mask, and then you press it down onto the surface. And here I just thought I needed a bit more contrast to show his hair better, so I'm adding a bit of the teal blue. And the nice thing too is if you don't have enough on there, you can add layers. So you can repeat that sort of stamping technique more than once. Uh, at the end of the video, I do show uh, an example of this that I did a um, seahorse and you'll see what I mean um, by adding different layers because you can see through the jelly plate, you can uh, line it up really well. I decided to use just a hint of black to tone down those highlights a wee bit. Suzanne Dufresne also designed a bunch of uh, female portrait faces as well that I used uh, extensively in my New Year's Eve streamathon, I believe. You want to check that out. And I thought they looked really good there together. And that's from PM Artist Studios as well. So that's kind of cool. And then I'll cut these and make different tags, maybe do some other things and show you some finished products. Uh, it's not finished, but that's where I'm going to stop for now. I made this little this little guy using a, um, a PM Artist Studio uh, stencil, and I used a similar technique as I used to make these guys, except I started with a blue color, and then I went to the black, and then I went to a darker blue, and then I just kept layering, uh, using it kind of like a stamp. Similar technique. I didn't record it, though. Um, and then with the more orangey piece. I made uh, this steampunk fella. I added some distress spray there so it did cover up some of that grungy background but it does make a good base. Again I didn't film this either I just used various stencils. Uh, this is a Nouveau uh, mousse this is, uh, like I said, distress spray and then intense pencils for the shading, some uh, metal gears that I glued on there. And then I made a, some ATC cards. So that was really fun. And this, I didn't add anything except for the line uh, denoting the edge of the floor and the outline. Everything else, that background is as is. And uh, these stickers that I used for this are from the uh, one of the antiquarian sticker books. Uh, this mushroom was cut out of more of that orangey color. So this is a die cut. That's a sticker. And here again, I just added this outline and some shading. And then this little guy here, I've got your back. And again, those are just stickers and I used ink tents to outline. And then here I made, not this background, but I just wanted to show you these other die cuts. So you, whatever leftover pieces you have, you just can use your die cuts. If you don't have a die machine, um, you can just um, hand cut shapes like leaves, flowers, circles, whatever you like. And then I cut down some index card shapes with the die cut that I have. And then I have these other leftover pieces that will make um, some cool tags, I think. And if you haven't um, seen Sharon at Texture Junkies, her YouTube channel, I if you like this kind of grungy thing, I highly recommend you check her out. She does a lot of different, you know, grungy, um, textury things. And um, she's really awesome. So she inspired me to really go for the grunge. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.